Good morning, everybody. Guess what? We have a great new idea for you. You're spending all this time at home, and Diane's going to tell us how you can update your bathroom with one easy click. Diane, how are you doing this morning? I'm well. Nice day. Nice, nice to be here in Franklin. Yes, yes. So, uh, I mean, we're kicking off the weekend great. The weather's supposed to be incredible today. I don't know if you've had a chance to look. Yes, enjoy. I hope to enjoy it all the way through the weekend. So you have a new concept called bathroom in a box. Correct. So tell us about that. Well, first let's talk about how, um, how you got started with that. It came about back in the day I worked for big box Lowe's specifically, and I did only bathroom and kitchen remodels. So with the Lowe's and the Lowe's model, it said they had an outside contractor. It was my job to promote and sell. Let's concentrate on bathrooms all the products related to the bathroom, sell the labor portion, put it together for the contractor, and then implement the project. And, you know, great opportunity. But I also recognized that everyday people would come to my area and ask, well, can you help me? And in a nice way, the answer was no, because if there wasn't labor attached to the project, then they were pretty much on their own. So it occurred to me, well, what do these consumers do? Because mostly it's DIY. If they're shopping at the Lowe's level, it's DIY or perhaps an individual contractor, occasionally a general contractor. So the contractor virtually said, find the products, I'll have them at the house and I'll be ready to go. So that kind of left the consumer without a solution. If they happen to be in the vanity or the plumbing area and got someone to help them to pick out a vanity, that's great. But then the disconnect was, well, where do I go for lighting? And does this go with that? And that was the big concern putting it together. So bathroom in a box is the answer for that. The name is simply a metaphor for everything comes to your house in a box. It's a metaphor. Nothing's coming to your house. In a box. <laughs> There's no toilet coming to your house. There's not a literal box, but kind of because you sent it to your email. So tell Correct. us about how this works. Cause I love this because for those who don't like to pick things out, like you said, or are not sure if things go together, you will put a whole plan together and send it to their email. Tell us about that. Correct. So I start, generally I start with a vanity because that's the focal point. Let's say it's a hall bath or a master. And from there, uh, maybe, or maybe I see an inspiration and that's sort of my catalyst for the actual output and then create a mood board. So it has all of the parts necessary for the bathroom remodel, except for things like tub locks, drains, valves. I'm going for the more design related items. Uh, one small caveat is that I make an assumption that a hall bath is a certain number of square feet, a master is a certain number of square feet. So that's a little bit of an estimate, but it still gives you a guide to go on because all of these, all of these design collections, as we call them, are priced. So you know ahead approximately what you're going to spend because that's an, uh, another big challenge for consumers is how much am I going to spend? So you can shop by price to the collection, all the products you need to buy, or you can shop by style and a wide range of styles from something that's trending and all white, uh, mid-century modern, on trend, a green bathroom, a blue bathroom. On my Pinterest, I have everything sorted out like that. Then all, then it's done in a mood board. So everything is done in a mood board, which is a designer's term for this is the output. And the Everything is also sized. So if it's a 60 inch vanity, it's sized accordingly. So it's a very nice presentation. When you purchase the design collection, it goes to your inbox. The what you get for your money is a shopping list, but it's not just a shopping list that says go to Signature Hardware and buy this faucet or go to Emser Tile and buy this tile. You get live links. So you can click on the link and go right to the retailer. So the shopping list has a little mini picture, the retailer, a description, the queue, and the price. And again, the price can fluctuate, but what the heck, it's getting you halfway there. Yeah, I mean, that's huge, mm -hmm. just doing all that research, because that takes so much time to find the product, who sells it, how much it is, that, that's huge. And then the other challenge is there's, there's in design school, design school one or interior design one, the first, the very first uh, exercise we had was scale and proportion. And as a prospective designer, if you didn't get scale and proportion, you were, you would just kind of be phased out of school. So that's another important ingredient. So you have to match 
the finishes, the color of the finishes, the scale of the product. In other words, you can't have a mirror that goes out past the width of the vanity. That would look silly. And then there's also with Bath in a Box, it's an opportunity to get access to retailers you don't even know about. Things that in the marketplace, oh, I didn't know about that company. Like, did you know Native Trails makes concrete, composite concrete, proprietary sinks? A little bit of a splurge. Why not a splurge? Why not one splurge in your bathroom, a light fixture, a sink? And those are the things you may not know about, nor do you have time to know about. I mean, how much free time do you have to shop? <laughs> then when you do shop, I don't even know where I am. I don't even know what website I'm in. I'm down a rabbit hole, which happens even to me. Yeah. Yeah, so true. Uh, so tell me about some of the trends you're seeing right now in bathrooms. You mentioned different styles. I'm seeing a lot of white. Is that still on trend? Very much so, but you're seeing a lot of natural wood. So like a blonde wood, a medium wood, not an orange base. Orange has gone out a long time ago. Um, white is still very popular, like white on white, for example. So how you make that work is changing up the tones of the white or the scale of the tile, and tile plays a big role. Feature walls are huge. So in a, let's say the shower is 42 by 60. So the 60 inch wall might be a feature wall, which is a different tile than the side walls of the shower surround. The other big one, this is a little harder to implement is a curbless shower or as low as you can go. So a curbless is easy to do in new construction, a little more challenging in a remodel because you have to cut into the joists and do it correctly. So you're flushing out the floor to the shower floor. So if you have the same tile, then you've just aesthetically or just tricked the eye and that bathroom feels larger. Uh, floating vanities, wall hung vanities, wall hung plumbing is huge. That could be your splurge item because it costs more for the plumber to run the plumbing. It also costs more because there's less of them. So supply demand says the fewer of something, the more expensive of something. They're beautiful, it's a beautiful outcome. And then the other additional cost is you need a separate valve, whereas in typical bathroom faucets, they come complete with the valve. Yeah, another thing I'm seeing is a lot of people in their master bed bathrooms are taking out the tubs and they're doing right. like really large showers. Is that something that you're seeing as well? Then it's a space, it's simply space. Do you have the space to keep the tub but go with a larger shower? If you have to give it up, give up the tub over the smaller shower. And I, my daughter asked me this once, how many bathrooms and kitchens have I been in? And I said, gosh, hundreds. <laughs> That's not to say I've sold uh, hundreds and hundreds. Well, perhaps I have, but that would be my advice. Take the tub out. Now, if you're getting up into the million dollar category, probably the bathroom's large enough to make the shower bigger, keep the tub or change the position of the tub or change the size of the tub. So always the shower has to be the big driver. And then the other would be, Instead of doing these little cubby hole niches, run the niche from corner out to a wall. A little hard to explain in on TV. However, suffice it to say, the bigger the niche, the better. Okay, so that's your items in the shower. That's what you're talking about, right? Correct, correct. So you can also do a linear drain, which allows you... So if you have a shower, it has to slope from four corners to a drain to make it drain properly. And I've seen plenty where that slope wasn't done correctly. But you can slope off two walls, therefore you have two planes going to a drain. That allows you to do bigger tile. When you come off four corners, you have to use very tiny tile to accommodate that angle, the pitch. So that's another neat look. Ah, uh, I see what you're saying now. That's interesting. Well, this has all been fascinating. I could talk about this all day because I Thank love you. talking about bathrooms and design, uh, but tell people who are interested because they may be we are spending a lot of time at home looking at their bathrooms thinking, man, it's time to change. But tell us where they can find more information. www.bathroominabox.com. And so tell everybody about what your ranges are for designs. Where does this start? It, uh, maybe $29 for a value price budget bathroom. So perhaps the house is in the 250 range. And why not Why not have a nice bathroom, even if it's in that price range? So a value price, that collection might be $29. You can go all the way up to $16,000 for like a double vanity master setup. That collection would be about $51. And not to mi minimize the cost of money, but isn't it worth it compared to spending hours of time without predictable results or spend $51 and get predictable results 
that are done by a designer. Hey, and if you want to take the credit, if a customer wants to purchase the collection and say, this is me, do that too. Yeah, I like that. Hey, look yeah. what I designed. Because somehow husbands expect the wives to be, to, to know how, honey, you, you're a woman, don't you know how to do this? <laughs> yeah, not everybody enjoys those types of things. Correct. Well, I love talking to you. I love talking about bathrooms and all the new things that are out there. There's so much. That's I think that's the other thing. There's so much yeah. out there. So More it's hard. Too. Yeah. It's hard to narrow it down. Mm -hmm. I think your next project should be kitchens in a box. That's what, uh, okay. So not to get in the weeds here, kitchens, number one, I mean, bathrooms are more complicated. They're smaller spaces. It's hard to bring in a big team. So you're limited there. They're more complicated because they have more water sources. Does that make sense? Yeah. Kitchens are supported by a, uh, a computer aided design program. So you're actually using software to design the kitchen and that makes it more simple. So there's more people that do kitchen design than bathroom design. And I like, I particularly like bathrooms better because you could have up to 30 to 35 products if you count all the support products, the transition at the door, the tub lock, all those kind of behind the scenes, the grout, the caulk, the thin set, the tile board. Kitchens don't have as many products. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. 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 More All complicated. Right. Just an idea. All right. Well, thanks again, Diane. It's great to you this morning. You guys go check it out. Bathroom in a box. Bye, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.